from San Diego, California, the 28th playing of the Holiday Bowl game matching the Oregon Ducks of the Pac-10 and the Oklahoma Sooners of the Big 12. And we hope your holiday season's been going along well for you. As you know, when we come to this time of the bowl season, the larder gets a little bigger. That means more money to be paid out. And the man standing next to me is Dan Fouts. He is an alumnus of the University of Oregon, but he's fair. Oh, yeah, real fair. And I really appreciate <laughs> you showing highlights of me running the ball, Keith. <laughs> well, it was too good to pass up. <laughs> Rare, let's, too. <laughs> let's start with strength against strength and talking about these two teams. Oklahoma has Adrian Peterson, the great running back, in good shape. Here comes Haloti Nata and one of the best Oregon defenses I've seen in recent years. Well, for Oklahoma, they want to run the ball, and who better to run the ball with than Adrian Peterson? He's finally over his sore right ankle. He's as close to 100% healthy as he's been all season. And last year against Oregon, he rushed for 183 yards. Nobody in college football runs harder than Peterson. Nobody hits the hole faster, and nobody is more important to the success of the Sooners than Adrian Peterson. And for Oregon, Oregon. Strength means Haloti Nata. This giant of a man anchors the Ducks defensive line. He was named the team's MVP this season. His penetration will be key to the Ducks success in stopping the great Adrian Peterson. A different kind of a look from the Oregon football team, the spread offense against the speed of the Oklahoma defense. Well, the Oregon Ducks will use that spread offense with two quarterbacks, Dennis Dixon and Brady Leaf. They'll throw the ball and hand it to a bunch of speedy wide receivers and running backs who can really fly. As for the Sooners, they will counter with the fastest set of linebackers in the nation. They're led by number 42, Rufus Alexander. He's all over the place, and he cares little for what type of offense or the type of players he's facing. As long as there's a football on the field, he's going to find it and make bad things happen when he does. We couldn't have better weather or better temperature to play a college football game. And... This is one of the good ones in this postseason play. And the Oklahoma Sooners kick it away. Garrett Hartley knocks it down the field, and it is picked up by Jeremiah Johnson. And Jeremiah runs into trouble inside the 15-yard line. He never really got it going, and the Sooners came in a hurry. Here is your starting lineup along the front for the Oregon Ducks. All the, these people started the last nine games, and the spread formation apparently has given them better help. The receivers, Dandy's here. Wide out, Demetrius Williams, 55 catches. He leads the core. And the backs, the quarterbacks to start, Dennis Dixon, who shared time with Brady Leaf since the season-ending injury to Kellen Clements. Terrence Whitehead is one of the top running backs in the country and has become a very good receiver. And you'll see him a lot, I suspect, you in the screen pass play tonight. They send Whitehead in motion. Good receiver. Dixon back there by himself, looking to throw. Pressure coming. And he runs the pressure. He's very quick, and he gets up across the 25 to about the 28. DJ Wolf tracked him Great down. Pressure again from the Sooners. It's there right in on Dixon very quickly. But check out this speed of number 10. A. Odell had him. So did C.J. Ayu. He turns the corner and picks up about three yards. But at 195 pounds, Dennis Dixon is not going to survive running the ball and getting tackled by the Sooner defense. It is second down and seven now, and uh, the Sooners go to five defensive backs as Dixon throws hard, and it's low and at the feet of the intended receiver, Cameron Colvin. Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator, came over from BYU. And he's not afraid to uh, be an aggressive play caller. He told me earlier last week he wants to score a lot of points. He's going to pull out everything in his playbook tonight. He may have to because Oklahoma's sitting there with that big hammer, Adrian Peterson, healthy. And Dixon turns and calls a timeout. So we've got no score here in the first quarter of play with 12-10. Here we go now on third down and seven. You've got three down linemen. You've got three linebackers. You've got five defensive backs for Oklahoma. And the Ducks really spread them out for this one. 
Here comes the pressure. The pass is away in a hurry, and it is incomplete. They're all big people in this group. They snap it, and on fourth down and two, it goes to Matt Draggett, who finds plenty of running room and crosses midfield and picks up a first down for Oregon. Perfect execution of the fake punt by Oregon as Oklahoma is looking to load up on that shield. They invited them inside and then behind those big guys in the shield leading the blocks. Watch Alan Patrick here, number 23, come inside. And now you've got Nata leading the blocking on the outside. Along with Andrew Murphy and Dragic picks up this first down easily. Goes 20 yards on the play, Keith. Goes for 20 quickly, and it's on the 47-yard line of Oklahoma. And so they take a chance. It pays off. You wonder if they would have gone for the fake if they had not been offsides on the previous play by Baker. It is Garen Strong throwing. Started around. Dixon going down the field, and Dixon was trying to hunt down the pass. And the quarterback with great speed turns into wide receiver, but they can't hook it up. Why not run a trick play after a trick play? The defense is not going to expect it, but the penetration here, pretty good throw here by Garen Strong, the lefty. I'm not sure that Dixon realized where he was on the field. He might have thought he was too far to the sidelines. He might have been able to take another step and pull that one in. Close. He got both hands on it, but couldn't reel it in. Now he goes back into the quarterback position out of the spread formation. Ball goes to him, throws it sideways. That's a forward pass. Ball goes to James Finley. And Finley will move the ball to about the 43. Well, this is what Croton was talking about, though, Keith. Being an aggressive play caller. You got nothing to lose. You're in your bowl game. You want to go 11-1, sure. But Mike Bellotti, a former offensive coordinator of, him, of himself, there's Croton in the box. The big thing here is now they're sending a message to Oklahoma that hey we're willing to try anything you better just cool your jets and play a little bit more zone in all, all this blitzing. All the blitzing invites option action too from these Oregon Ducks and they can run it well out of this formation this ball ended to Terrence Whitehead Whitehead slashes into the middle and he's very close to the first down. He's down around the 37 yard line yeah, and they're all young too, Keith. Only one junior on that starting line. Fourth down and a half a yard. They're going to run for it. And they won't get it. They won't get it. It was Zach Latimer, the middle linebacker, who put the hit on the big back for Oregon, Jonathan Stewart. Stewart is a freshman at 228 pounds. And Latimer put him on his back. But Latimer paid for it. You can see him holding his left arm and left shoulder. Stewart's a big guy. Great tackle by Zach Latimer. And we've got a timeout. All right, Oklahoma's first time on offense now as Rhett Bomar steps back and throws on the first play of the ball game. Joaquin Inglesis, one of the two freshman wide receivers starting. And he's got a big play out of it all the way inside the 40. Left side guys and the front for Oklahoma over 300 pounds. Messner is the junior. The others are seniors. They'll have their hands full all night against the Oregon defensive front. Malcolm Kelly is the other end. He is the other freshman in places just made that play. Uh, Red Bomar beat like a drum as a red shirt freshman in the first half of the season. But he's a big tough guy weathered the storm and has played very well for the last six games. Ball thrown again to Inglesis. And Inglesis is down inside the 30 yard line and uh, short of a first down. Back here in San Diego, it's going to be a first down run by Adrian Peterson, brought down by Blair Phillips. Peterson's first carry of the ball game, but it's early, folks. Chuck Wilson, the new offensive coordinator for the Sooners, told me they want to get Adrian. Rolling early and often out of that eye formation. He is so quick to hit the holes that he's at full speed when he gets that line of scrimmage. It's important for him to be deep in that eye formation. It is first down for the Sooners on the Oregon 25 yard line, staying in the shotgun. Bomar back looks, throws, pass complete. Adrian Peterson making the catch. 
after he slipped out into the open and he will go inside the 20 down to about the 17. The Oregon defensive front, Aloki Nasa, 6'5", 340, first consensus All-American at Oregon since Mel Renfro in 1962. And the linebackers, the linebacker strong safety Anthony Truck leads the team in tackles with 85. The defensive backs, well, you no longer throw it at these guys. You better know what you're doing because they had 22 interceptions during this past season. Goes to the center and uh, looking for the opening is Adrian Peterson. He doesn't quite get the first down, two yards short. Here's Holly Rose. Well, guys, Adrian Peterson is as healthy as he has been in weeks. The coaching staff told me that he didn't miss one single bowl practice. In fact, the two weeks leading up to bowl practices, he was there every single day. They said it's amazing what a fresh Adrian Peterson brings to this offense, and you're already seeing sparks of that, not just in the running game, but in the receiving game as well. All right, thank you. It's there three for three for Bomar so far in the ball game. Now he moves the tight end, and Paul Thompson over comes to this side. He's the former quarterback. Bomar stands, plenty of protection. In zone, ball dropped. Joe John Finley, who was in there as a tight end, 6'6", 244, a sophomore. He's defended by Aaron Gibson. The story here is Gibson is only 5'9". And Gibson came from the other side of the field. Ball hangs up in the air too long. That's how wide open at first Joe John Finley was. You talk about perfect timing by Aaron Gibson. That was it right there. Saved the touchdown. Now they'll try for three. On the field for the field goal try, Garrett Hartley, 34 yards. The holder is... Uh, Balls up. And the kick is good. Garrett Hartley will kick it off for the Oklahoma Sooners. They go on top with a 34-yard field goal. And the Oregon Ducks wearing rather subdued uniforms tonight. Plain white shirts. Pretty much plain black britches. High hanging kick. It goes to the two-yard line to Jonathan Stewart. And Jonathan Stewart hammers his way across the 20 and out to the 21. Zach Latimer is back on the field at the linebacking position for Oklahoma as Oregon comes up first down on their own 22-yard line. Dixon turns and gives the ball to Terrence Whitehead. And Whitehead keeps on pounding. Back goes Dixon to throw. Throws the ball sharply, and it's on the hands of the receiver, Garen Strong, but he can't come up with it. Rufus Alexander was defending. Oh, well, we told you he's a sideline to sideline player. Number 42 is Alexander playing the pass perfectly that time. Did not go for the inside fake by Strong. That's a drop pass by Garen Strong. Kind of had his hands turned backwards on that pass from Dennis Dixon. They go for the first down and they get it with Whitehead moving across the 35 yard line. On first and 10 for the Ducks from the 35. Dixon takes off. He's got eight yards. Zach Latimer took his legs away from him. But he's a long strider. Yeah, the game plan for Oklahoma tonight on offense, they're going to load that schooner wagon with a lot of Adrian Peterson. Want to get him 30 touches on the ball. And then on defense, hey, Rufus, raise a ruckus, will you? He's already done that here in the first quarter. Second down and two from the 43. Call it second down two for the Ducks. They trail Oklahoma on a 34-yard field goal. Three to nothing. Dixon looking, lets it go to the sideline, pass caught. Brian Pessinger, sophomore out of Long Beach, California, went up and pulled it down. Dixon's got some mustard on that pass, I'll tell you. And great touch as he had to get it over the linebacker, Clint Ingram, and drop it down to his receiver. Watch this ball go over number 44 right there, who is in great position by one inch. And Pacinger brings it down and gets out of bounds. 
What a throw by Dixon. Tight rotation helps, doesn't it? Oh, no question. Dixon gives the ball to Whitehead, found the hole, and one man keeps him from getting across the goal line. Calvin Thibodeau stayed at home and was there to make the tackle. Yeah, a heck of a tackle by Thibodeau because that was a huge hole on a counter play. Oregon gave a look of power behind Tim Day on the right side, and Whitehead cut it back and picked up a big gain here. But let's check out exactly right. Did you see how Thibodeau was also looking for Dixon to take the ball on the bootlegs? He stayed at home, made the tackle. It'll be second down, call it three. Dixon's fast down the middle, pass complete to the tight end, Big Ten Day, and Day's inside the 10, first and goal, Oregon. The Ducks are marching. Yeah, this is an impressive drive for Oregon after getting stopped on fourth and short by the Oklahoma defense and giving up a field goal. But Dixon certainly has settled down this offensive line, giving him time to throw. Not much pressure from the Sooners on that play. Oregon has not done a good job scoring once in this area of the field. Dixon shopping takes off. Gets down to the six, maybe the five. And that was Rufus Alexander making another tackle for yeah, Oklahoma. Of, yeah, part of the reason that they have struggled, Keith, is because of this spread offense. It's brand new to them. Earlier in the year, they had all kinds of trouble just running the ball, period. But it's an evolving type of offense. And when you change quarterbacks, as the Ducks have had to do with Clemens' injury, I thought that was a good play by Dixon, not throwing the ball, not risking an interception down here. Collective blocking, though, is difficult to achieve when you're running a spread offense. You can't get that real power stuff. Goes the other way with it to Demetrius Williams. Touchdown! There's your running game. Great deception by Oregon. Gave the look of the option play to the wide side of the field. Came back and pitched it at the last second to Williams on the end around. Perfectly executed. And check out the blocking. Out in front, number 75, Jeff Schwartz. All about 350 pounds of him. Clears the way for Williams' score. Oh, he just rode him out of town, didn't he? Yeah. That Martinez for the point. Good. Two minutes and 58 seconds to go in the first quarter, and Oregon goes to the lead, 7-3. to three. We're in San Diego with the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl game. Second down and 10. Ball dropped. Just plain dropped by J.D. Ronald. J.D. doesn't get to see that ball very much. He's a blocking fullback. He had a trying to set up a screen for him, and he didn't handle it. Here's Todd. Keith, this could be a big loss for the Oregon Ducks. Number 45, Matt Tune, the junior on the defensive line, is going in, complaining of an injury to his left collarbone. Kevin Style, the trainer, was looking at it. Just can't get in there big enough because they've got the tights, the jersey so tight on there. They're going to have to take him in, take everything off. So Matt Tune into the locker for the time being. Well, that would be a huge loss because he plays alongside uh, Nata. And the ball down the middle. Almost completed, almost intercepted. Uh, J.D. Nelson almost picked it, but again, he doesn't step into the throw. And Joe John Finley was the intended receiver. And the overthrowing a guy 6'6", you'll see this ball sail over the hands of number 85, working against Aaron Gibson. But it's, it's Bomar's throwing motion, basically, just does not step into the throw, and the ball will sail almost every time when you're trying to throw a hard one. Cody Freebie's in the punt first time tonight 32 yards. That's only his second punt. Justin Fennessy is waiting for it. Oh he got this one. Runs Justin all the way back takes a bounce rolling around and did he get to the chalk. Apparently not. This bounce was key. It went straight sideways softly. Poteet knocked it back and it's Oregon's ball at the one.
Dixon standing in his end zone to take the snap. He's going to throw it. And complete it to Rosario. Dante Rosario, who does a lot of things for the Oregon football team. Now they get the chains up the sidelines to about the 15-yard line where they've got some daylight. Number 44 is Rosario working with a dual tight end formation that time. They took the short, short route. Rosario with good size, 6'4", about 250. It was a big part of the offense last year, but it's changed. But he contributed on that play. Oregon leading in the ball game, seven to nothing. Six minutes to go, the first half. And Dixon flips it outside on an option play. And there's a pickup of about three yards by Garen Strong. This is Whitehead breaking two tackles and takes it across the 30-yard line for another first down. That's a heck of a tough run by Terrence Whitehead. Now that's the thing about Terrence Whitehead. He gained a thousand yards rushing last year. This year, just about 600. But so many times he makes the first guy miss. This time he makes two miss, including Zach Latimer. You wonder about Latimer's shoulder though, because he had Whitehead in the hole that time, but couldn't wrap him up. Right, sir. Thank you. Second down, seven. Inside it goes to Whitehead on that little shovel pass. But the Sooners played it well, and Reggie Smith coming up in a hurry with help from Latimer again. Latimer's all over the place tonight. You know, that looks like a very dangerous play, but in reality, it's a pass play. So if the receiver, or the running back in this case, doesn't catch the ball, it's just an incompletion. It, can show, it shows you the versatility of this offense. It's a lot like what the Utah Utes ran last year with Urban Meyer. Third down, long three. Dennis Dixon reorganizing things before the snap. He keeps it himself, and boy, they ate him up. Right about the line of scrimmage. It's Latimer one more time with Dvorak getting a piece of the action. That's about as well as you can play the option play with Dvorak. Great penetration there, help from Latimer. Dixon had no chance to pitch the ball, and even if he had, there was somebody for the pitch man on the outside. Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, congratulating Latimer as he goes off. So it's fourth down. Dragic has gone 50 and 56 in his last two punts. He didn't get all of this one. Kind of hooked it to the sidelines, and it bounced straight out of bounds, and that'll be pretty short. Oregon and Oklahoma, and this was the closing of the halftime show. It was a good one, but I'll tell you what. We mentioned shootout at the start of the telecast. That's it. <laughs> a lot of uh, fireworks, not offensive fireworks in this ballgame in that first half. In fact, 7-3 is the fewest points each team has scored all season long in the first half. I think that's got something to do with that enormous amount of time that they were off, don't you? Well, normally the offenses benefit from the time off because defenses don't get to practice tackling. But the tackling in that first half by both teams is just outstanding. Yeah, well, it's good. The offense was, was the one that was missing the well, clicks. And the big question, though, will be for Oklahoma, what about Rhett Bomar? Will he be able to go in this second half? And what about Oregon? Todd Harris caught up with Mike Bellotti. The coach said this. Coach, 7-3 to three at halftime, not a typical Oregon high-powered offense. What do you do to get your offense in track? Well, uh... They're doing a nice job on defense. I think we can be more aggressive. We just have to continue to make sure we keep possession of the football. I'm pleased with the way our defense is playing. We're stopping the run. We just have to be careful to play action pass. And, uh, you know, we have to be just continue to be aggressive offensively. You've got two looks at your quarterbacks. Which one has impressed you thus far with a hotter hand? Well, we're, we're going to stay with the rotation system right now. I think Dennis has been the more effective quarterback so far. But uh, I think it's Brady's turn coming out. We'll give him a series this half, and then we'll decide. Matt Evanson will kick it away for Oregon. And again, I'm struck by the fact that the, the wardrobe for the Ducks in this ball game has been rather basic. 
the kick. Goes into the corner to Alan Patrick. Found the crack and almost went home. I mean, he was a step away from see you later. Rosario brought him down. Yeah, I thought he'd have more touches in the first half than he did. Well, he's got it right here, and he runs right into the middle of that big Oregon defense, and uh, that's a hard place to pick up much yardage. After that false start, the ball now is at the 31-yard line. Now, statistically, we take a look at what has gone on in the first half. Oregon with the edge in total offense. Again, no rushing yards at all for Oklahoma. That's just not Sooner football. Time of possession favors the Ducks, as does the 7-3 scoreboard. And he gives it to Peterson, and Peterson's hit behind the line of scrimmage. And uh, Mr. Peterson, meet Mr. Nata. That is a tree that moves. It is third down and eight for the Sooners after possessing the ball at their 47 and losing a touchdown. Bomar throws, just flipped the ball over to Inglacius. He picks it up and he's really trucking it down the sidelines, breaking two tackles to get down near the 15 yard line. Well, Chris Messer didn't get a touchdown on that uh, long play that fumble after Peterson but watch him block Devin Young hit long here on this play he rides long behind the quarterback fantastic throw on the run by Bomar and then the freshman Iglesias with his fifth catch of the night the three freshman receivers have ten catches among them that one went for 34 for number nine the ball is at the 16. Out of the shotgun, Bomar looking to the corner. Touchdown. J.D. Reynolds. Great pass protection for Bomar. In fact, this offensive line's done a great job tonight, not giving up any sacks. And only three in the last four and a half games. As Bomar is able to step up in the pocket, find Runnels on the wheel route against the linebacker. Messner with another good job on long and a perfect strike as Runnels catches his fifth career touchdown pass. Good. Balboa Park. How many happy days have been had there? Home to obviously the world famous San Diego Zoo, one of the greatest in the world, and some of the city's finest museums are now located in Balboa Park. As J.D. Ronalds, he is so happy. He's headed for a career in broadcasting, he hopes. Already got plans to go to work in the radio, which I highly applaud. It's a good place to start. From the 18-yard line, it's Jonathan Stewart. The big freshman running on the 30 yard line now third down and 19. Dixon gets it away and it's not complete. Garen Strong had it and he lost it as he went down. Well the problem for Oregon is that they're getting beat up front by this pass pressure of Oklahoma. This is how Oklahoma started the game, knocking Dixon down, not giving him time to find his outlet receivers. And Thibodeau and Dvorak's got to get a lot of credit for causing a lot of those bad snaps from Anoka Lucas because he's right on Lucas's nose. Well, the Oregon O-line needs to hunker down. It's up to them to stop it. Yep. Sooners look like they want to come, but they don't. Kicks away. It's a low kick by Dragic. Bounding around and bounding down the field, and it turns out to be a pretty good kick. Goes out of bounds at about the 26-yard line with 7.34 to play in the third quarter. And okay. Be sore tomorrow. He stopped at the line of scrimmage, now retreating deep, looking for some help. Here come the tacklers. He finds the crease. Almost broke it and left town with it. Patrick Chung finally tracked him down and made the tackle. Tackle made by Patrick Chung. Now Peterson is making it exciting for Sooner fans. 
total ad lib here on the draw play goes into the hole and then goes backwards 10 about 15 yards he retreats and as you said Keith right here if Chung doesn't make this tackle he might have gone all the way and he comes up Jones is back in it is third down and eight Bomar with a lot of time now gets some heat takes a wallop and he's down on the field he took a wallop from Toena but he gets up and the pass thrown up the field with good accuracy to Manuel Johnson and it's good for a first down let's take a look at that big hit by Matt Toena Number 45 is going to come right here, and he's just going to flatten Bomar. Look at that catch on the outside. It's Manuel Johnson with another big catch. That's a freshman from Gilmer, Texas. And Peterson comes back onto the field and goes in as the deep back. And Toena is out of the lineup for the moment. He ran into one of his own men, but keeps his feet and gets to the outside. And now you may get a face mask here. And look, yeah, I guess not. Justin Fennessy with the hook, grabbed him around the head and got the shoulder pad, I guess, and took him down. But that'll be a first down. You can see just how determined Adrian Peterson is to try to break a long one here. Great balance there. Fennessy will come over and got him around the shoulder pad underneath the face mask, Keith. Yep. Watch his left hand go right under the face mask, legal tackle, and bring Peterson down. Boy, you talk about strength. That's one strong defensive back. Well, there's always the BCS. They can figure that out. <laughs> Second down and ten. Ball is handed into the belly of Peterson, and he's on a tear right now. He's ripping apart. Well, I guess he answered the question about his forehead. His willingness to take on tacklers with his forehead cut wide open just moments ago. Check out this play by number 28. Watch the head go down. Chung right there. J.D. Nelson. Big first down for the Sooners. And the blood seeps through the bandage now. Well, the adrenaline is, is really, really flowing. The ball is laying on the 19-yard line, where it is second down and six. And Kiwan Jones is back in at the running back spot. Peterson is still on the sidelines. And Jones gets it, cuts it, gets a daylight, goes inside the 10. First down and goal for Oklahoma at the eight-yard line of Oregon. Well, this is Sooner football. What they did in the first half was not. They majored in the pass in the first half, had very little yardage on the ground, but right now it's strictly on the ground. Tiwan Jones and Adrian Peterson behind that big offensive line. Davin Joseph was the man that had that big block to get him down there. It's Jones. It's touchdown. Chris Chester let him in. It's almost as if the Oklahoma offensive line was mad that Chris Mester's touchdown was taken away from one of their brothers. Because <laughs> they have just dominated that offensive line. Chester with a huge block there as Kiwan Jones went in virtually untouched. Hardly for the point. The hole by McEachern. Good. Led by Adrian Peterson's determination and willingness to lower his head to take on tacklers. The Sooner wagon is rolling right now. Kiwan Jones from eight yards out, and the Sooners extend their lead to 10. 
Well the Sooners came out hard and fast and even though they didn't do anything in their first possession they set the tone with their defense and from then on they have dominated this third quarter and scored to take a 10 point lead two touchdowns. This is Dixon having all kinds of trouble. And again, they're just running over the Oregon offensive line. C.J. Ayu with that sack. Watch uh, Terrence Whitehead. He comes up trying to pick up Clint Ingram, and Clint Ingram just deposits him straight backwards. And then there's just too many red shirts all on their feet, all scrambling, all fighting, trying to get number 10 on the ground. And they finally do. C.J. Ayu and Ingram take him down. And so the Ducks will punt again. Dragic in for his sixth punt of the night. He's done very well. He's had one short one of 30. He'll hit it about the four yard line. Low kick got some room for the return. It's Juan Rankins. Jawan breaking to the outside. Ran right by number 91, but there's a penalty flag thrown back at the 43. Look out for the push in the back. And I was really struck at what they've done in this city. It's beautiful. And there they put some work to do, I guess, what they have in their plans down the way, but that's a look at it from the Corono Coronado Island. But it's really pretty. Yeah. You got the train running right through town. I love it. Jones is in there. Peterson out for a, a little more rest, and Bomar keeps the ball. Rose out, throws on the run. Pass complete to Kelly. Kelly is brought down by Finnessy, but it's going to be very close to another first down. Now it is a first down. I don't know if uh, Bob Stoops is a faith healer or not. We've got a Haloti Nantas down on the field for Oregon. Like he got his knee rolled up on, but Bomar with the bad right hand continues to throw strikes. Officials time out. Injured player. They really feel that uh, Malcolm Kelly's going to be a star for the Sooners at 6'4, 204, just a freshman. Good speed, good hand. Big, interesting young man. <laughs> Adrian Peterson is back in there. He's got the ball coming this way. He runs over one tackler and goes out of bounds at about the three. Maybe they're probably going to put him at the five. He just has too much speed to get around the corner and then too much power when he confronts the tackler. Look at the speed to get around the corner here. Now he's going to lower his shoulder, run over a defensive back, Finnessy, then try to stretch and get in the corner of the end zone. Davin Joseph was the man that helped him turn the corner though he kept the road open for him and it's first and goal Oklahoma at the Oregon five Peterson's in there as the deep back gets the ball and goes to the two before Devin Long brings him down. Now people forget uh, because he had that ankle injury for most of the year. But Adrian Peterson would finish second in the Heisman voting two Heisman votings ago when he lost out to Matt Liner. But uh, you can certainly put him in the favorite category for next season. Especially the way he finished the season and the way he's playing in this second half tonight. Well Bob Stoops told me yesterday that he uh, was not entirely healed yet from that ankle. It was apparently a severe sprain. Well, according to Stoops, nobody's hurt. <laughs> that was during the quiet of lunch. Ball is handed to Peterson again, and he goes hammering into the middle. He lost the oh, ball. Fumbled the ball, and Oregon's claiming they've got it. He was stretching for the end zone, and Trucks came away with it. I don't think the officials have agreed with that verdict yet. Now well, Trucks ripped the ball out of his hands as he was trying to break the plane with the ball. The ruling on the field, the runner was not down. On bodies of players, fumble the ball, first down. He definitely was not down. He was on top of the stack, and as he reached the ball for the goal line, Dan's right. Brooks took it away from him. 
That's the fir third fumble recovery for Trucks. This is a gift from Adrian Peterson. Too far away from the goal line to stretch out and try to break the plane. Stoops claiming he was down. The officials saw it differently. He was rolled up on top of people. What a big break for the Ducks. Could have been a real killer right there. He's called timeout. Bob has. While you're watching the replay of what we just saw with Peterson at the goal line, Holly Rowe was listening, and she says. Well, William Lemonier, the, the uh, referee, just had a lengthy conversation with Bob Stoops and says, look, Bob, he was on top of bodies while he was stretching the ball out. So even though it looks like he was down, his knee never hit the playing surface or the field. He was laying on top of people. He had a lengthy conversation with Stoops. Stoops seemed satisfied with it, walked away First and just shook his head. Brady Leaf at quarterback for the Ducks. Brady Leaf is in there at uh, quarterback. And it's an empty backfield for him. So Dixon's unable to do anything. They'll try Leaf. He throws a bad pass. James Finley intended. Thank you. Leaf throws again. This time the ball is caught by Finley. But he only gained minimal yardage out of it. Four at the most. This is where Oregon has really struggled. Tonight, they're 0 for 8 on their last third down tries. Somebody's got to run past the head of the marker to get and provide a target for the quarterback to get the first down, and they're not doing it. This man has doesn't have the mobility of Dixon. May have a better arm and more accurate arm. Pressure's coming. Just a sure shoot, and here they are. Jailhouse, uh, and it is caught. They got past the marker, and he hit him. It's Finley coming up with a catch, and he moves the ball to the 39-yard line. Even with all that pressure coming, Leap was able to deliver it and get the first. Well, he had a good look at it. He saw it coming just as we did and stayed cool and delivered the best pass of the night. Side arms it to the sidelines. And that's incomplete. Here's Todd. Well, Keith had a chance to talk with Kellen Clemens just a moment ago. He told me this is the most emotionally draining week of his life, not being able to play in his final game as a senior. And he said how much he wanted to play this Oklahoma team. I asked him what Dan was bringing up earlier, why Oregon hasn't gone longer. And he said, quite simply, we cannot protect long enough to get that route off. He says, we've got to find some way to get slants, crosses, anything to open this thing up. But right now, they cannot go long because there's just not enough time. Keith? And yeah, they got to play Oklahoma again next September in Eugene. Low snap picked up by Leaf, throws, dropped. It was in the hands of Finley, and as he turned up field, expecting to be hit, he dropped the ball. Just trying to do too much, trying to run with the ball before you catch the ball. But again, it's a, a bad snap from Anoka Lucas. That throws the timing on. That forces Leaf's, Leaf's eyes down to where the ball is. So that's why the ball thrown a little bit behind Finley, but still should have been caught. He had his hands backwards. So they're looking at third and long again. Third and ten. 17 to 7, the Sooners lead. Ball is thrown into the Sooner bench, incomplete. He had to loop it up over the uh, attackers. And threw it too high and too far. That's fourth down and ten. Now that was Larry Burdine giving the pressure there for the Sooners from his defensive end spot. Good for Oklahoma to see him back in the lineup. Had a bad injury to his left elbow. Here's your ball game right here. Could be. Fourth and ten. The ball is on their own 39-yard line. They don't get it. Sooners might stick it in the end zone, at least get three. 
Goes the other way. Whitehead. He's going to get it. He's going to get a lot more. They finally knock him out of bounds at the 39-yard line of Oklahoma. Darian Williams saved the touchdown. Now maybe that's what Oregon should have been doing all night is going for it on fourth down there. Two out of three there. One was a fake punt by Matt Dragic. This is really well designed. Whitehead is number 24. It's a sprint out to the right. Throwback screen all the way across the field. And he's got a pretty good convoy out in front. Lucas with the block right there. And then Whitehead getting out of bounds after picking up a huge first down for Oregon. 21 yards on fourth and 10 to keep their hopes alive. 5.45 to play in a ball game. Leaf turns and wanted to go deep. Nobody there. A lot of green grass, so he takes off and spins down to the 30, and he's right on that marker. Well, he's close enough to where they ought to take a look at it to see if it is a first down. Appears to be about six inches short, though. But you notice that time he went for the first down, didn't go down, didn't turn down the contact. So the crowd of 65,416, which is a Holiday Bowl record, beginning to wake up a little bit as the action has been revived by the Oregon Ducks in this surge. Leafs pass is completed to Finley. And Finley is thrown down at about the 23-yard line, 22-yard line, and that's a first down. But Holiday Bowl observers and people who have come to this game for 28 years now know that this game itself has a great history of fantastic finishes. Are we going to have another one tonight? Williams. Tough catch by Demetrius. Yeah, I almost looked at uh, the way that play was first executed that Williams might have been looking to pitch the ball back to Jonathan Stewart on the hook and ladder. <laughs> you know what the key to that is, don't you? No. A good what, hook. What goes in the hook? <laughs> Back goes. Leaf throws. He's got a man. He's got another first down. Yeah, he's right. close. He's pretty close. James Finley. Finley has suddenly become the prime target. He tried to turn his body so he could fall downfield, and the defender wouldn't let him. Yeah, they're used to having success. You don't win 10 games with not knowing how to finish games. Oregon has all three of their timeouts remaining, but they got to quit wasting time. They got to stick it in the end zone soon. It's third down and one. Thrown out to Finley. He may not get that first down. He's going to lose. That was not a good decision. Reggie Smith came up and dropped him for a loss. That was a slow developing play. It was an obvious play, and it backfired. And they're going to have to force uh, Oregon now. is going to have to use that first time out. Great reaction, though, by Reggie Smith. You talk about the receivers, the young receivers for Stoops' team. A lot of freshmen. Well, Reggie Smith is a freshman starting at safety for Oklahoma, making a big play there. The ball is right on the 16-yard hash mark. It is fourth down and a short four. More like three, actually, because the marker is just beyond. Well, they're going to go for a field goal, Keith. But now the kicking team comes trotting on the field. Not a bad decision. This would, if it's good, would cut the lead not going to be a field goal. They got a man going to the corner of the end zone and that gets a penalty flag. Well, they tried all kinds of trick plays. What a brilliant call by Bellotti because Leaf is the holder. Split day out to the wide side and if he wasn't interfered with, he might have caught this ball. But, you know, the ball looked like it was sailed out of bounds. This might I be ruled going out of bounds. Yeah. be uncatchable. Eric Bassey was the defender for Best Oklahoma. Interference, 13 on the defense. Bot foul. Automatic. First down. I tell you what, that's a bad call. This ball landed five yards out of bounds. This was uncatchable. Look at Bassey hustle out there to find Dave. But watch where this ball lands. Not even in the chalk, which is a good three yards wide. Oh, Oregon got away with one there. 
Heads up play by Bassey though to prevent the touchdown. But that ball was uncatchable. It is first and goal on the three for the Oregon Ducks. They're down by 10 points, 334 to play in the game. Low snap, Leaf gets it. Lost a high one into the end zone. It is touchdown. Tim Day, who hadn't caught a TD pass all year, and suddenly the big guy is involved in two big plays, and one of them was the touchdown. Yeah, got it over Darian Williams. Williams goes 5-10, Day goes 6-4. Two big plays by Tim Day, back-to-back, -back, as Oregon is going to make this a finish. To pull within three. Paul Martinez. Squeezes that one in. Whoa. Just barely. 17 14. Wow. You know, Keith, uh, Brady Leaf had his choice of receivers on this play. Watch number six, Demetrius Williams, as we freeze it right there. There's Finley right there. As we run this a little bit, you'll see all both of them are wide open, and the only guy that's covered in the end zone by two guys is Tim Day, and who gets the touchdown? Going up high, picking up his first touchdown of the season. Happy holiday, Tim Day. <laughs> but, you know, you even look at Cameron Colvin, number 80, who was breaking open in the end zone with nobody around him. Well, here it is. He's going to kick it on the ground. Bouncing around, and it's gravy bounce. And the Sooners handle it up around the 33-yard line, and that's where they will possess it. J.D. Reynolds is the man that caught the ball, and here's Todd. Well, new life in the Oregon sidelines. You can imagine, I just talked to the referee, and I asked him, was that ball ruled uncatchable because he was interfered with it? He said, exactly. They felt that he could have caught that ball had he not been bumped right there. Now, Dan, he would have been pretty tall, and I don't know how high Tim Day can jump, but you bring up a good point. He said, though, that if he would not have been interfered with, he would have made the catch. Yeah, Superman wouldn't have made would that have catch. would have had the opportunity, maybe. Whatever, it's now Oregon's uh, big problem to stop Oklahoma's offense. And a guy named Peterson just tucked it away and uh, got two yards when it looked like he would lose two. Yeah, but he went out of bounds and stopped the clock. That's more important right now than anything. This thing right there, that 323. Second down and eight coming up for the Sooners. Kiwan Jones is down in the backfield with Bomar. Two wide outs to the top. Maybe changing his play here. Better hurry. That's the illegal motion right there. Kiwan Jones cuts back inside. I don't see any laundry. Well, there should be because Bomar was moving, as was Kiwan Jones when the ball was snapped. Second team timeout. Oregon calls the timeout to stop the clock. And no call on what you were talking about. 3.15 to play in the ball game. Now you can see the clock up there in the right-hand corner. Well, watch Bomar moving around. Now Jones is going to move. The ball is snapped, and they're both still in motion. It was a yawner for a while there with Oklahoma sitting on a 10 point lead and the Oregon's offense ineffective. But then all of a sudden. The worm turn. And Bob Stoops brother Mike Stoops the head coach of Arizona knows Brady Leaf well because uh, Leaf had to come off the bench after Kellen Clemens was injured. And Dennis Dixon was injured and lead the Ducks to a narrow win. Now the Sooners spread them out. Sideline to sideline. 
On third and four, Bomar's pass is incomplete, intended for Kelly, defended by Fennessey. Now it is fourth and four, and obviously the Sooners will punt. Now Fennessey has uh, four interceptions of his own this year. He's a senior. Did a great job of not making contact or wrapping that left arm around the body of Kelly and got his right hand in when the ball came. This is where he's most dangerous though. He's one of the top returners in the country and he loves the middle return. Took one back 69 yards against Mike Stoops Arizona team this year. Sooners were a man short waiting for the punting team to get organized and now they're ready with. Freebie. Last time was a shank 30 yards. That's coming hard. Kick is away. It's a low one and it's on the field of play and it's rolling around inside the 25 and dead at the 23. So there, the Oregon Ducks will get the ball with three minutes and four seconds to play in the ball game and they trail by three points. And the big thing here is that with a lot of time and a timeout to use, they just need a field goal to tie this one up. Martinez has a 51 yarder this season. And so does Matt Evenson. He's got a 51 yarder. So either field goal kicker for Oregon can reach from distance. Brady Leaf is in the catbird seat as far as posture and that ball is pitched to Whitehead. He was broke the hold of a couple of Oklahoma defenders and got out of trouble. Holy cow. How did he catch it. And secondly how did he get away. Well, he did his Adrian Peterson imitation is what he did. <laughs> he got right in the hole and just backed up. Kept his legs going. Here it is Keith. Two Sooners collide. And Whitehead comes out free. Well, he's not a gimme. He's 224 pounds. He's a big guy. That bad pass. Whoa, almost picked up. Well, Ingram almost picked that one off and should have. The ball was thrown low. If it's not thrown low, not only does Ingram pick it off, he scores. Right. This would have been his fifth pick of the year, trying to hit Tim Day. There was nobody between him and the goal line. I mean, it was clean on that side of the field. Yeah, he scored on one against Tulsa this year. Where's Demetrius Williams? Come to this side, the Whitehead. Whitehead gets loose. He's got a first down. He's across midfield. He's still going. He's finally brought down at the 35-yard line by Eric Bassey. And Whitehead did exactly the same thing against Fresno State earlier year when they needed it same type of play a screen pass to Whitehead came into the game with 46 catches behind a lot of good blocking and determination watch him cut back against the grain here picking up blockers heading down the field vertically and setting his team up in real close to field goal position Jeremiah Johnson comes into the ball game. He is the tailback. You got to get Whitehead out and let him get his breath after that play. I don't know where uh, Stewart is. Maybe they're afraid that Stewart, who's had some fumble troubles. Well, Johnson is a better receiver, Keith, than Stewart. Johnson runs the same type of plays as Whitehead does. That's why he's in the game right now. On first down, they go to Johnson. He's not that big and they handle him. He's an even 200 pounds at 5'9 and Dvorak takes him down after he picks up about a yard. Now you know Dvorak's going to be playing hard in his last game as a Sooner. He missed the game last year when the Sooners played the Ducks. That was the first game of when he was kicked off the team. He's very excited to end his career with the Sooners against the Ducks and he makes a huge play here on first down. Second down and nine. Leafs pass down the middle is incomplete. And Finley is yelling for interference on Williams but gets no call. They got tangled up. The ball was thrown sharply. If he breaks away from Williams he scores. 
Watch the right hand of Williams just punch that ball out. Great timing. We just saw Justin Finnessy with a play just like that. When the Sooners had the ball, big play there that time by the sophomore Darren Williams. 34 yard line, it's third down and nine, a minute and a half to go. All kinds of movement along the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Polani Masoon jumped offside. Five yard penalty, still third down. Leafs got to throw the ball. Now throws it to Jeremiah Johnson, and Johnson gets loose and gets a first down. Holy cow. <laughs> yes, he does have to throw the ball, and he finally got around to it. <laughs> and he found a freshman. You don't talk about his scrambling ability, but you talk about the fact he doesn't get rattled. Look at Latimer right in his face, keeping his wits about himself, putting the ball right on Johnson. Johnson gets out of bounds, and the Ducks are still alive. 117 to play. Leaf runs it up into the middle. But you know the bad snap just took that whole play yep. and threw it in the trash can. Yep. Just been a problem all night for Anoka Lucas with Rusty or Dusty Dvorak on his nose. The ball has come back low and just throws the timing off, especially on an option play as that one appeared to be. Whitehead's back. Leafs pass. Intercepted by Clint Ingram. And that's your door slammer. Gonna, there's a flag down on the field, but that's for excessive celebration. And why not, Clint? Your fifth pick of the year, that just saved the game because that was going to be a touchdown to Demetrius Williams if the ball thrown two inches higher. Great job by Ingram stretching out and picking that one off. Following the interception, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 44. That'll be half the distance to the goal. First down, Oklahoma. One of the four senior captains. Great play. You can see Williams was behind him, but the ball is thrown too flat by Leaf. What an athletic play, and I'm not so sure that this action right here is unsportsmanlike. I think that's just a kid having fun and winning a game for his coach and his team. So the Oklahoma Sooners uh, with the ball and only 33 ticks remaining on the clock. And Oregon with what? One timeout remaining? Yep. School's out. This baby's over. 17 to 14. I guess like Yogi said, it ain't over till it's over. So let's wait till the clock runs out. A heck of an effort by Brady Leaf leading the Ducks down. They were within field goal range there. Bill go would have tied it, but the Sooners going crazy. Our Capital One player of the game, well, you just saw him, number 44, Clint Ingram. Fifth interception of the season. This one seems to have saved the game for the Sooners to give them their eighth win on a season and started out with a great deal of difficulty for them. They played 12 freshmen along the way, and they all grew together. And here's the play. Williams was behind Ingram. Ingram with great speed, recognition, 
athletic ability and finish the play. Take a knee and roll the clock. 31 seconds. Omar Neal's in the victory formation for the Super Penalty flag. And that stops the clock. That stops the clock. Red Bomar slams the ball down. That's going to be another one of those uh, unsportsmanlike penalties. Number seven. Half the distance to the goal. Third down. Now you move him back half the distance. Now a knee becomes a little bit more of a problem. Yes, it does. I wouldn't want to get anywhere near that man right now. Just excited, that's all. He slammed that ball down because he thought the game was over and that the Sooners had won. Yeah. It's third down. He might be forced to take a safety here. And that wouldn't be all that bad a deal because they're only well clock has started again and now a delay of game penalty is being called Offense, charge the number seven not Half sure the why the game the clock started there down. they wound the clock and, and they rolled the clock uh, once uh, the mark off in, on the penalty had been made. I'm not sure that after a, a, that kind of a penalty that the clock stays stopped, does it? Does I think count? so. Now taking a knee is a different critter. But that'll do it. And the game is finally over. And the Oklahoma Sooners have won the ball game by a score of 17 to 14. Well, it got pretty exciting in that final minutes of the fourth quarter. Uh, but Oklahoma won the ball game in the third quarter when they scored two touchdowns. And then Clint Ingram's interception made it stand up. And your final is a win for the Sooners. Here's Holly. Coach Stoops, what happened there at the end? Well, we made some foolish plays and we go and get a personal foul and stop the clock. You know, just need to play smarter, but we did what we need to do and went and won. Told you at halftime the team behind comes back to win. Your offense finally got rolling. What worked with the running game? I'm glad you reminded me of that, but um, as I said, coming out at halftime, we wanted to get them moving early, get them running, hopefully tire them down, and then hit them in the second half of the running game. It worked for, you know, for a, a good part of it. I liked in the first half. We were close to making some more plays. Uh, we didn't feel we were just strong enough initially just to pound them early. We wanted to try and work them later in the game, and it worked for us. All right, congratulations, Coach. Thank, Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Final score, Oklahoma 17, Oregon 14, and another great Pacific Life Holiday Bowl game. <laughs>